Let's look at an example of how Euler's method works to approximate the solution to a differential equation. So let's look at the equation y prime equals negative 2y plus 5t. Now you should recognize that this is a linear differential equation and that you can solve it using integrating factors. But I want to use a more simple differential equation to illustrate the technique of Euler's method. So Euler's method says that the approximation for the next point, yk plus 1, is the approximation at the previous point, plus we're going to follow the slope. The slope in this case is negative 2yk plus 5tk. And then we follow that slope for a time delta t. So what we're going to do is we're going to approximate the solution on the interval from 0 to 2. And we're going to first start by using only two intervals. So in this case, if we're using only two intervals, then delta t is going to be the length of my interval, 2 minus 0, divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So we're going to start at step 0. That's going to give us an initial time of t0, which is 0, and an initial condition that y of 0 is 5. And what we want to do is we want to take two steps of Euler's method. So the first thing that we do is we calculate the slope. The slope is going to be negative 2 times the y value, which is 5, plus 5 times the current t value, which is 0, which gives us negative 10. And then we're going to multiply that slope by delta t. So negative 10 times 1 is going to be negative 10. Now, our next point, y sub k plus 1, is going to be the previous point, y sub k, plus slope times delta t. So in this case, we're going to get that at time t equals 1, our first approximation of y is going to be 5 minus 10, which is negative 5. Now, we're going to uh, reevaluate the slope. So we're going to do negative 2 times y, which is now negative 5, plus 5 times t, which has now been updated to 1. And that's going to give us a slope of negative, or sorry, positive 10 plus 5, which is 15. And then we're going to take that slope. We're going to multiply it by delta t. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the y and we're going to add to it slope times delta t. So now, negative 5 plus 15 is going to give us 10 when we're at the time t equals 2. And so we've said that we believe that y of 2 is approximately... 10. Now you can see these slopes are quite large, negative 10 and also uh, 15. So the jumps that we're making are quite large because our delta t is, is quite large. It's 1. So let's use 5 steps instead. And that means that our delta t, if we use 5 steps, is going to be 2 minus 0 over 5 steps. So our delta t is going to be 2 fifths, or 0.4. And then now let's repeat and do Euler's method again. So the zeroth step is that we start at time t equals 0. And our initial y is 5. And so our slope is going to be negative 2 times 5 plus 5 times 
our current t, which is zero. And so our slope, of course, is still negative 10 like it was before. But now we're gonna multiply that slope times delta t. So we're gonna do negative 10 times 0.4, which is gonna give us a negative four. So now that the jump that we're going to make is not gonna be quite as extreme. Okay, so we're going to take our previous y and add to it the slope times delta t. And so for our k equals one step, when time is 0 0.4, then uh, our new y value is going to be one. Okay, so now we're gonna compute the slope again. So we're gonna do negative two times one plus five times 0 0.4. Okay, so notice that we're updating the time more often. That, that's going to help us uh, get a more accurate estimate. If we do this, we're going to get negative 2 plus 2. So in fact, our slope is going to be 0. So that tells us our slope times delta t. Okay, 0 times 0.4 is going to be 0. So what are we going to do? We're going to take our previous point, yk. We're gonna to add to it slope times delta t, which was zero. And that's gonna give us our second step at time 0.8, and that we're also going to be at one. At this point, I encourage you to pause the video and try to go through this process on your own, going to the third step, which is gonna be at time 1.2, the fourth step at time 1.6, and then the fifth step, which is finally gonna get us to time t equals two. Con so continue with this procedure. Now, assuming that you have paused the video and worked through the procedure, let's go ahead and just verify those results. So the slope is gonna be negative two times the y value of one plus five times 0 0.8. So that's gonna be negative two plus four which is gonna give you two. So two is the slope, and then the slope times delta t is two times 0.4 or 0 0.8. We take that uh, y value previously, which was one, and we add slope times delta t, which is 0.8, and we get 1.8. So now we're gonna do the process again, negative two times 1.8, which is my y, plus five times my new time value of 1.2. If we work that out, we're gonna get 2.4. Now that we have our new slope of 2.4, we're gonna multiply that by delta t to give 0 0.96. And so we're gonna take our previous y of 1.8 and we're gonna to add to it 0 0.96, which gives us a total of 2.76. So now we're gonna take our slope, which is negative two times 2.76. We're gonna add five times our new time value of 1.6. And that's gonna give us a new slope of 2.48. That slope we're gonna multiply by 0.4, which is gonna give us a slope times delta t of 0.992. I want to add that to my previous y, so 2.76 plus 0 0.992, it's gonna give me 3.752. And so uh, what that does is that gives me a new estimate for y of two, it tells me it's approximately 3.752. And I'm gonna believe that that's a more accurate estimate because I've used smaller time steps. Now you probably thought this was a very tedious exercise and I only made you go for five steps. But if I want something more accurate, I'm gonna to have to use a lot more time steps, maybe considering uh, a delta T uh, that's going to be very small because I'm using, say, 100 time steps. Okay, so, so there must be some computational tool that we could use 
maybe a computational tool that is good at adding up things in columns uh, in order to automate this process so that I'm not having to do it by hand. So we'll look at that in a moment. I wanna go back to the Slopes app though so that you can just visualize what this process looked like. Okay, so we started and we, uh, we computed our first slope. Our first slope was negative in that case, okay? And, and uh, give me one second. We actually started y0 was five in this case. Okay, much better. So I'm gonna start with a, our first slope, okay, which starts at t equals zero. And I'm gonna start at uh, y of zero being five. And notice our first slope is pointing down. And so our next point is uh, at t equals 0.4 is y equals one. So that points it downward, of course. Uh, the next one we remember had a flat slope, a slope of zero, okay? So we just move across horizontally for the next one. And then, then we started getting positive slopes. So I'm gonna start adding those back in. And then uh, this was our first estimate. Y of two was approximately 3.752. And that gave us a decent estimate of the solution to the differential equation. Of course, maybe we want to use instead 100 points. And so if we use 100 points, then um, we'll get something that has a much nicer curve shape, okay, and gives us a, a better approximation to uh, the solution of the differential equation. But hopefully what you uh, saw when we were doing this was that when we had five steps, um, that it had the general shape of the solution to the differential equation, okay? But by refining and using, say, 100 steps, okay, then uh, we've got a, a much more refined approximation to the solution to the differential equation. So uh, that's a, a glance at how to, to do Euler's method, okay? I want to, to look at quickly one more example using Euler's method. And in this example, um, it's kind of a silly equation. It's y prime equals sine of 2t. So I'm aware that you could integrate the right-hand side and that uh, you could get the exact solution. But... I just want to focus on, okay, what's the slope in this case? The slope in this case is going to be uh, sine of 2t sub k. And so uh, what happens if I try to approximate this uh, the solution to this differential equation if I start with a delta t of pi over 2? So I'm going to start at... Uh, my first step, my zero step, uh, is going to be starting at t equals zero, and uh, y of zero is going to be zero. So I'm going to evaluate the slope, and the slope says, oh, the sine of zero is zero, and slope times delta t in this case is then zero. If I move on to the first step, then uh, my next time is pi over two, uh, my next y value is, of course, the previous y value, 0, plus slope times delta t, which is 0. So I'm still at 0 for y. And then I'm going to evaluate the slope. Real quick, I'll do a side computation. Let's do the sine of 2 times pi over 2, or the sine of pi is going to give me 0 for the slope. Okay, 0 for the slope. Slope times delta t is 0. Move on to the next step. Step two, which is at time pi, okay? Y has still remained zero because I have not had any value for slope times delta t. Okay, so I'm gonna evaluate the slope. Uh, sine of two pi is zero. Slope times delta t is zero. Okay, so that means that for my third step, it's three pi over two, my solution's still zero. 
And so uh, my slope is going to be the sine of 3 pi, which happens to be 0. My slope times delta t then is 0. Of course, that gets me the next step, step 4, which is at time 2 pi. And that's going to give me a y value of 0. And somehow, I'm starting to think that maybe the solution to this differential equation doesn't just remain at zero all the time. Because I know that the solution is just the antiderivative of sine of 2t, which I know is going to oscillate. So something went wrong with Euler's method. And I just want you to understand that sometimes something will go wrong with Euler's method. You can't just accept that the first estimate that you do is the correct one. You need to somehow maybe alter delta t. In this case, we need to use a smaller delta t so that we're not regularly hitting the points where the slope is zero. Okay. So as I said before, uh, the uh, this method, Euler's method, is tedious if you're starting to just do it by hand. So we want to use some sort of program that's good at, say, adding columns together. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to approximate solutions to the differential equation uh, using Euler's method with a spreadsheet. So we're going to use a spreadsheet to implement Euler's method. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you what one of these spreadsheets might look like. So this is going to be the solution to the differential equation y prime equals y minus t, another linear differential equation that I know we know how to solve. And then we're going to look at it for three different initial values. Those initial values are going to be uh, 0.25, 1, and 3. And, and I'll show you in class how to make a spreadsheet like this that basically automates the adding of columns and the multiplying of columns uh, so that we can get the solution to the differential equation, or at least an approximate one. What's interesting about this particular example uh, is we can look at the graph of the solution. And for three different values, we get some nice from some nice looking uh, uh, curves here so so for some for a, for three when my initial value is three we see that the solution goes to positive infinity um, for uh, a quarter being my initial value we see that the solution starts to to curve down it'll go off to negative infinity um, it's what's quite interesting is that when we start at one we see that the solution um, ends up being actually exact because the solution there actually is a line for that for that point. You can solve that yourself and the solution actually is linear. And so because the solution is linear and Euler's method is based on linear approximation, then it's actually going to generate that solution for us exactly. Okay. Uh, so that gives you a sense of, of how, where we're headed in terms of automating the solution uh, to the differential equation. A natural question that you might want to ask, though, uh, is what about the error that comes from Euler's method? Because this is an approximation. It's not going to be exact. So what about uh, the error? Well, the first question we can ask is, is when is Euler's method going to be an underestimate or an overestimate? So imagine that I know that my solution is concave up. Well, if my solution is concave up, then as I do linear approximations to the solution, notice that those linear approximations are always going to be underneath the solution. Okay, so those tangent lines are always going to be underneath the solution. So my approximation, when I have a concave up function is going to be an underestimate. Now, I happened to show one that was increasing, but I could have shown something that was decreasing 
And you would see that if I start here at this initial value that the tangent line is going to be underneath. And so the tangent lines, uh, as I continue to follow the differential equation, are going to continue to be underneath. So what about, uh, I don't know, a concave down function? So let me write, draw a concave down solution. Okay, if I start with something concave down, notice that my linear approximation is actually going to be above. Okay, so even as I'm, I'm turning back towards this, my, my estimate of the solution is going to be above. So if I do a concave down function, then I'm going to have an overestimate of the solution. So of course, I've drawn the solutions themselves and said when they're concave up and concave down. Okay, but that may not be given to us. What's going to be given to us is y prime equals f of ty. And so if we want to know whether that solution y is going to be concave up or concave down, then uh, we can verify the concavity using the second derivative. So y double prime is going to be the time derivative of the right-hand side. So we can take the time derivative of the right-hand side, and that'll tell us something about the concavity. Now, another question that we want to ask to kind of sum up this lesson is, how big can the error actually get? Okay, so what if we started with a simple differential equation, y prime equals y? Now, of course, we know the solution to this differential equation, uh, starting with, say, y of 0 equals 1. The solution to that differential equation is going to be y of t equals e to the t. So we know the solution. But let's go ahead and compare the solution uh, to our estimate using Euler's method, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of a table of what Euler's method looks like uh, for that differential equation. So here we're trying to solve y prime equals y, y of 0 equals 1, and then our delta t is going to be let's say 0 0.25, okay? We know that y of t is supposed to be e to the t. And so I actually have a column that's written here for air, and the air is going to be e to the t, or e to the tk, minus our estimate, which is y sub k. Okay, so that, that way that the error will be positive, okay, because e to the t, of course, is concave up, so we know our estimate is going to be an underestimate. And what we're going to do is we're going to estimate this using Euler's method in a table, so I've generated a table for you, and I want you to notice what's going on with the error. Of course, initially the error is zero because we're starting at the initial value, um, but notice that as we go down, the error is starting to increase. Okay, so keep following the air, and you'll notice that it continues to increase. In fact, it's starting to increase quite rapidly. Of course, y is increasing quite rapidly as well, okay, because we're growing exponentially, right? So you can see that the y values are increasing quite rapidly. But as we go down, let's solve this until, say, y equals uh, or t equals 10, okay, so we're going to solve, and notice that our estimate at t equals 10 is 7,523. That's our estimate, essentially, of e to the 10. But how far off is that estimate? Well, in fact, it's actually 14,503. So it's almost twice as much as our y value. So our error if you look at this table, is almost twice as much as the y value. In fact, our error is growing exponentially, just like our solution is growing exponentially. 
And so what that's saying is, is that even for this very simple differential equation, it's possible that our air could grow exponentially. And even if we use smaller time steps, the air is still going to grow exponentially. It might start off very small, but eventually uh, it's going to continue to grow exponentially and then become quite large. So that tells us that Euler's method is limited. There's this possibility of exponential growth in the air. And so we're going to need to look at, can we somehow revise this method of approximating solutions to the differential equation so that the air does not grow uh, exponentially like this? And that will be the topic for our next lesson.